And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. And as always, I'm your host, Kenneth Gruenfelder, and it's great to have you guys here on this Thursday. We have a lot to talk about on the show as we normally do, but before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys uh, to become part of the show, uh, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized. Make sure to go to the following link, streamelements.com slash slash tip. Again, that really helps the show. It makes the show more interactive. And then, um, yeah, that's, and of course, you know, it's it's a great way, like I said, it's a great way to be interactive. And, um, you know, it, it really makes the show more uh, engaging, um, you know, between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers. So, um, again, the following link is streamelements.com slash GSMC Sports Network dot slash tip. And, and as always, it's on the ticker on the bottom of the show segment uh, here on the screen. So, with that, we got a lot to talk about on the show today. Uh, so starting off the show, we'll go through the quarterback news around the NFL because there's so much with guys getting benched, guys coming back from injury, um, you know, trades, of course. So we'll get into all that. Then we're going to talk about Tyree Kill facing his former team as, uh, you know, that's the title of this, uh, this show. So he'll be going up against the Chiefs for the first time since he was traded to the Dolphins. Then we will talk about the Cowboys-Eagles game and how it's a statement game for the Cowboys if they want to really be taken seriously by myself and a lot of other people as well as they travel to Philly uh, for the game on Sunday, which is a huge game. One of the few games that is... Uh, there, there's a few games that are huge on Sunday, um, and we're going to talk about two of the three uh, today at least. And then uh, we will preview tonight's game between the Tennessee Titans and the Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's the rundown for today's show. So let's get right into the first topic, which is talking about a lot of the quarterback news, because there's a lot of it. Uh, injuries, trades, benchings. There, there's so much going on with the quarterback position right now. Um, so I'm going to be honest. I don't know where to start. But we'll, I guess we'll get into uh, the two situations that have to deal with quarterbacks being benched. So with the Atlanta Falcons, we'll start off with them. They, uh, they're they tied for the division lead in the South. We know this. Uh, the NFC South is a division that nobody seems to want to take. And right now the Falcons are tied at 4-4 four and four with the Saints. But they've kind of been having issues at that position. Um, Desmond Ritter really has not played well this year. He's been turning the ball over a lot. And the Falcons do have Taylor Heineke as their backup quarterback. So he actually did end up playing on Sunday. Uh, Desmond Ritter left the game. They were, um, you know, evaluating him for a concussion. And I, he was cleared to play, but they didn't go back to him. They stuck with Heineke instead. And he ended up finishing the game. Um, and, the, and the Falcons ended up losing that game 28-23 to against Will Levis, his NFL debut, through four touchdown passes. Um, so the Falcons dropped to 4-4 four and four on the season. But they're still tied for the division lead. Uh, the Saints won, so those two teams at the moment are tied for first place in the South, but yeah, it's uh the quarterback position is a weakness for the, for the Falcons and you know, they got a good roster. They got good playmakers on offense. Their defense is pretty good with some of the acquisitions they've made also in the off season. Um, you know, they brought over Jesse Bates, the safety from the Bengals to improve the secondary with the defense. Um, you know, so the roster is good for the Falcons. It's just, the quarterback position is what's holding them back. And Desmond Ritter this year so far, 1,700 yards passing, six touchdowns to six interceptions. And he fumbled three times against the Bucs a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it's really been kind of a rough go for him. And, you know, they're going to roll with Taylor Heineke, who finished off the game. He went 12-21, 175 yards and a touchdown. And they'll be going up against the Vikings on Sunday, who are going to have their uh rookie quarterback going for the first time um obviously because with Kirk Cousins you know missing the rest of the season and they also just acquired Joshua Dobbs um and it, I don't I don't know if he's going to play it doesn't seem like it at the moment um so it's going to be Jaron Hall who came in relief for Cousins and he went three or four for 23 yards and I'm pretty sure I think he either fumbled or he threw a pick uh well I think he might have fumbled but there, there was a turnover you know in their own territory late in the game um but the Vikings were fortunate because they were up by a couple of scores that um you know and, and the Packers just their offense can't really do much lately so it really didn't matter but 
Um, so you're going to have Heineke starting against most likely Jaron Hall. Uh, but Joshua Dobbs, and, and I talked about this yesterday, so he gets traded over from the Cardinals. And listen, I, I think he um, he adds a new dimension to the Vikings offense now because, I mean, look at the, the weakness of the Vikings offense is their running game. They're still trying to get Cam Akers going. Alexander Madison has struggled this year. But Joshua Dobbs, you know, he could run the football when he has to. And that's something that Kirk Cousins, you know, doesn't typically do you know he's more of a traditional pocket passer which that's an endangered species in the nfl if you really think about it so you know him going in with the vikings at four and four i mean the vikings i think it still get that seventh seed you know and i i think with justin jefferson coming back that's gonna that's only gonna help him so you know and you still got hawkinson jordan addison's been having a good rookie season kj osborne i think is a good number three for the Vikings, so, you know, I, I think uh, the Vikings, they could still hang around. Now, I don't really expect them to do much, but, you know, the, at least for this year, they're going to at least try to, you know, make a run at the playoffs, because you because they definitely can at 4-4, four and four, and, you know, you look at the other teams around them, they, they could definitely, uh, they could definitely make that last wild card. Now, again, I don't really expect them to go far, but, you know, we'll see. So, that's the news there. With both of those teams, the Falcons and uh, and the Vikings. Falcons, I think it's the right move starting Heineke. Heineke gives them a better chance to win. So now we talk about the Cardinals. Interesting situation there. So they traded Joshua Dobbs because I, I again I was like very, before this trade happened they, they talked about they're going to start uh, their their rookie Clayton Tune or Kyler Murray and you and I'm sitting there going well what happened to Joshua Dobbs and then later you find out oh he got traded so that makes sense. So it's going to be either Clayton Toon or Kyler Murray on Sunday to go up against the Browns. I guess they're probably leaning towards maybe starting Clayton Toon. I think, listen, the Browns, they got a good defensive front. I think you kind of want to like have Kyler Murray make his debut the following week when they play the Falcons at home. You know, um, I guess, you know, starting on the road against Cleveland, yeah, that's kind of a rough way to... Uh, you know, get going in your first start this year, but, and especially coming off of an ACL tear. So Clayton Toon could be making his uh, NFL debut on Sunday. Also, uh, Tyson Bajan, he's, it looks like he's going to start again this week. Justin Fields is still uh, week to week with his injury. So he's going to be starting against the Saints, most likely Bajan. And on Sunday night against the Cardinals, I mean, uh, against the Chargers, yeah, he um, he didn't really. They, they really didn't do that much. Um, so uh, he is going to, uh, but he will be making another start at least, you know. And we'll see what happens with Fields moving forward. But that's what it looks like at the moment. Um, Kenny Pickett, I know with the game tonight. Obviously, he uh, left the game uh, against the Jaguars, um, but he said he's for sure playing. So you know, we'll see what happens there um let me check really quickly here so yeah um he doesn't have any injury designation uh yeah he is set to face the titans tonight uh he was listed as a full participant in on uh wednesday's practice report doesn't carry an injury designation so yeah he's going to be uh, getting the start tonight and that's good for the steelers because mitchell trubisky looked pretty bad against the jags and listen the steelers are still in it when it comes to the uh, the wild card, and I mean, do they have an outside chance to, chance to win the division, of course, but um, the wild card is more likely, and Kenny Pickett gives them a better chance to win than Mitchell Trubisky. Um, and then when you look at what's going on with Will Levis, so uh, Mike Vrabel was talking about, you know, if Tannehill's healthy. It seemed like he was leaning more towards starting Tannehill if Tannehill was ready to go, um, but... It looks like Will Levis will be definitely starting tonight against the Steelers. Uh, Ryan Tannehill was ruled out uh, with his ankle injury, still dealing with that the, uh, injury that he suffered when they played the Ravens uh, a few weeks ago in London. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be Will Levis, and he had an impressive debut, and let's see what he's made of tonight. Hostile environment in Pittsburgh, that defense... Let's see what he does. Let's see what he does. It should be an interesting game. 
Um, you know, we'll talk about it later in the show, of course. But, yeah, so you got that. Um, you know, Pickett's healthy. He's good. Well, not healthy, but he's cleared to play at least. Um, he's probably still going to be dealing with that, you know, rib injury, but he'll play. And you got Will Levis going tonight. Also, uh, Matthew Stafford, he's still kind of day-to-day with his thumb injury. If he ends up not playing on Sunday, it's going to be Brett Rippon. So we'll see what happens. Uh, we'll know more, I guess, tomorrow. Um, also, oh, the other thing, too, is Deshaun Watson, his his status, because he's missed, uh, you know, he missed last week, obviously. Um you know, so it, that's an interesting situation with what's going on there because Deshaun Watson really has not played well for the Browns this year. And, yeah, I mean, they gave him all that money. So, I mean, they kind of got to ride it out at this point, but he really has not looked good. Um, it says he looks good in practice. I'm looking on the sleeper app. So, um, if he's ready to go, I mean, he's going to get the start against the Cardinals on Sunday, and we'll see if he can, you know, get it going um, I did forget to mention, though, because I said I was going to go over the quarterbacks that got benched. Um, I did go over Desmond Ritter getting benched. Jimmy Garoppolo is, has been benched. Aiden O'Connell is going to be the starter uh, on Sunday and moving forward. And, you know, I feel bad for Garoppolo just because uh, I feel like he doesn't catch a break. And... You know, it, it just, it, it's unfortunate, but he hasn't played well, leads the league in interceptions. I mean, Monday's game was, was hard to watch. It was a tough watch because you had Devontae Adams open a couple times and and you just missed him. Or you threw it in double coverage and it got picked off. Um, he looks like a different quarterback now that he's not with San Francisco, that's for sure. But Aiden O'Connell's going to get the start and he's going to be uh, the starter moving forward. And it's just a mess with what's going on with the Raiders. I mean, you let go of Derek Carr. You replace him with Garoppolo. Garoppolo has not been good. And now you're starting Aiden O'Connell. So Raiders made a mistake there. And you could say whatever you want about Derek Carr, but Derek Carr, out of those three guys, is easily the best quarterback, and he should have stayed a Raider. And, I, and, most, and Raider fans would agree with that. I'm sure they would. You know, but you got to look at ownership, and you got to say to yourself, "Yeah, they made a mistake." You know, bringing in Josh McDaniels as the head coach, and uh, and it was funny because I was watching a video of a YouTuber that I like to watch, and um, you know, he goes over every single game, and he talked about all of the Raiders' losses last year, uh, like against the Cardinals, they blew a twenty to nothing lead. Uh, what else? I mean, they blew a lot of leads, but it was like so true, though. Um, I mean, they they blew it against the Jaguars last year. I'm trying to think. There were, like, all these games that it's like you should have won. Oh, yeah, like, you barely, like, moved the ball against the Saints last year, who Derek Carr eventually went to. Um, you know, this year against the Steelers, like, kicking the field goal when they should have went for the touchdown to tie the game because they, they didn't even end up getting the ball back. Um, I'm trying to think. What were the other bad losses? But there, there was that one where, like, they just... And they got shut out against the Saints last year. That was bad. Um, but, yeah, it just... It was a disaster. And then they let, and they let go of Derek Carr. They should have kept Rick Bisaccia. It's true. That's that. But that is something he definitely said. They should have kept Rick Bisaccia. And I agree 100%. They made the playoffs. They After what happened with John Gruden and Henry Ruggs, you would have thought this team would have fell apart. But they all came together. They made the playoffs. And then you let him go. You bring in Josh McDaniels. And the team regressed. The team regressed, and they let go of guys that helped make them to the, get them to the playoffs. So, um, you know, yeah. So we'll see what the Raiders do. They got Antonio Pierce uh, as the interim head coach, so he's going to finish out the year, and they go from there. So, uh, with that, we're going to take our first break of the show, and then when we come back, we're going to talk about this game on Sunday between the Dolphins and the Chiefs in Germany, as Tyree Kill will be facing his former team. For the very first time. So stick around and we'll be right back here on the GSMC football podcast. 